بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نیوز وتھ فاطمہ می ویلکم فرینڈس ٹوڈیز وی آر جسٹ گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکور دا نازیہ حسن ایز وی نو نازیہ حسن واز اے پاپولر سنگر آف پاکستان نازیہ حسن واز بورن ان نائنٹین سکسٹی فائیو ان پاکستان شی واز بیسیکلی اے سنگر سانگ رائٹر لائر اینڈ سوشل ایکٹیوسٹ شی واز ریفرڈ as queen of south asian popular she was referred as the queen of south asian pop she is considered one of the most influential singer in pakistan starting in 1980s she and her brother zohib hasan have sold over 65 million records worldwide here is a list of her 20 hit songs she is still remembered for Disco Diwani in 1981 Aao Na in 1981 No Entry in 1986 Rock and Roll in 1986 Aap Jaisa Koi in 1980 Boom Boom That's Favorite 1983 Dheere Dheere in 1982 Dosti 1983 Main Aaya Tere Liye in 1986 Jana in 1982 تیرے قدموں میں ان 1981 دل میرا ان 1981 آنکھیں ملانے والے ان 1983 کوئی نہیں 1982 ڈم ڈم ڈی ڈی ڈم ڈم 3 خوبصورت 1987 آؤ نا 1987 لیکن میرا دل 1981 تیری یاد 1987 if you could read my mind 1992 This pop classic was a part of her fifth album Camera Camera. Nazia Hasan was born in Karachi, Pakistan and brought up in Karachi and in London. She was the daughter of Bashir Hasan, a businessman and Muniza Bashir, an active social worker. She was the sister of singer Zohaib Hasan and Zara Hasan. So let's discover her career. Nazia Hasan's professional music career started at the age of 15. She met film director Feroz Khan at a party in the UK. Let's discuss about her personal life. Nazia Hasan received her bachelor's degree in business administration and economics from the American University in London. In 1991, she became an intern in the Women's International Leadership Program at the United Nations. Later, she went on to work for the United Nations Security Council. She had a London University Law LLB degree. Nazia Hassan married Karachi-based business, businessman Mirza Ishtiaq Beg on 30th March 1995. It was an arranged marriage. Hassan's marriage was full of problems and difficulties, and she divorced Beg three months before her death. She accused her ex-husband of physical abuse and for poisoning her in a testimony given to the UK High Court before her death. In recent years, Beg started misapprehension through social media about Nazia Hassan's private life. Mirza Ishtiaq Beg claims that Nazia Hassan was his wife until that. Nazia's fans upraised grave concern about Beg's moral values towards her. On June 21, 2000, Pakistan's highly acclaimed newspaper Daily Jung published an interview with Nazia Hassan. In the interview, Nazia opened up for the first time about difficulties she faced during her marriage. She accused her marriage of cheating on her with a Pakistani actress. She revealed how her ex-husband forced her to give a statement to the media that they were living happily. In a similar interview, Nazia stated that her husband refused to bear the expenses of her cancer treatment and that she was looked after by her parents. Nazia said that she would rather die than live with Ishtiaq Beg as caused her more pain than cancer. It's too sad. The marriage to Nazia was Ishtiaq Beg's third. He has a son Imran Beg who born in 1984. With his first wife, Ishtiaq Beg was also briefly married to Pakistani actress Shazia, which ended due to Beg's mental health. These two marriages were kept secret from Nazia's family. Ishtiaq and Nazia Hassan had a son, Arez Hassan, born on 7th of April 
born on 7th of April 1997. Nazi Hassan died of lung cancer in London on 13th August 2000 at the age of 35. She had been admitted to the North London Hospital three days earlier when her condition was very bad. She showed signs of mild recovery the day before she died and it was thought that the doctors would allow her to go home. The next day, her mother Moniza was called to the hospital where her daughter had started coughing heavily at around 9.15 am. She died within minutes. Nazia was buried at London Muslim section on 5th September 2000 as per Islamic rites. Sometimes, somewhere, her brother Zoheb revealed she died an unhappy person. She died in pain. Reflecting upon Nazia's philosophy on life, Zoheb said that she was a humanitarian. I always told her that she should not be a singer. He said, adding that he had asked her why she was a star. She had no ears about herself, but she believed she could reach the hearts of millions through music and singing and could do good humanitarian work. He explains how with his pain, his respect for his sister grew after her death. Her charitable work, most of which I became aware of later, showed me how deeply human she was. He sat amazed by her, by her work. But then he grew more serious as he spoke of her fa fast-paced approach to life. She shook his head sadly. I would tell her I can't keep pace with you, but she never told me she was going to die so soon. I will never forgive her for this. Looking troubled, Zohib explained how he was with her in the last year and a half of her life how we watched her wilt away, although the doctors informed the family that Nazia would not survive. She was optimistic. She wanted to live for her son, Zoheb said. She wanted to do another album with me. Zoheb said that she kept the family in the dark about her marriage and never shared that she had to endure till she was finally divorced day before her death. But Zoheb said it was worse that she had deluded them into believing that she would survive. She left us in no man's land. Zohib also said that being a music composer, his sister input was invaluable as it was always constructive criticism from a professional partner. That is not there anymore, says Zohib, indicating that making music without Nazia is not easy.